guys, welcome to Insight. I'm Paige Pierce, world champion professional archer and member of the United States archery team. I just want to start by saying that I know there are so many different ways to set up a bow and shoot a bow, and I am never going to say that my way is the only way or the best way. I simply want to teach you the tips and tricks that I have used to find success along the tournament trail. So today I want to talk to you guys about the difference between a command style shot and a back tension style shot. And then I want to show you guys how to properly shoot back tension with a hinge, a button, and a wrist strap release. So to kick this off, I want to show you this neat little tool that I just got from War Torn Archery. It's called the Spitfire, and it's actually a torqueless bow shot trainer. So it looks like this. It has a hand grip and a swiveling level on top. It can be adjusted to your draw length, and when you're at full draw, it actually lets you know if you're torquing the grip by looking at the level on top. I'm going to be using this throughout the entire video to demonstrate how to properly shoot back tension. So what is a command style shot? A command style shot is when the archer decides when to fire the release and it's going to look something like this. When they come to anchor, they're going to aim and their sight picture might be moving around the target and as their sight enters the dot, they will then actively decide when to hit the trigger and make the release go off. Command style shooting can be very effective, especially in certain situations such as wind or high pressure situations where you just need to get up and get that arrow off. But there are a few downfalls to command style shooting. A command style archer will have very high highs where they're incredibly tough to beat, but they're also going to experience very low lows. One high level archer who is a successful command shooter would be Tim Gillingham. Now with Tim, when he's on, he is on, but he could very well walk to the next target and blank it completely. And unfortunately, that is the life of a command style shooter. I would also say that the biggest downfall is that if you're going to have a long archery career, that inevitably you will probably get target panic. And that's something that you do not want to battle. I would say command style shots are good for short periods of time, but it's not how I would choose to shoot over the longevity of my archery career. So now that we have covered command style shooting, what is back tension? Now this is something that you hear people say all the time and it's like a legend, it's a myth. How do you do it and what is it? Well, the difference between command style shooting and back tension mainly is one thing. Command style shooters know when the release is going to fire and a back tension shooter simply pulls through the shot and has no idea when their release is going to fire. Now that may sound scary, but the idea behind it is that you're just going to aim in the center of the target and keep pulling through the shot until it fires. The shot should always be a surprise if you're shooting proper back tension. So now I want to teach you guys how to shoot back tension using the three releases here in front of me. My best advice would be if you're learning back tension, always learn on a hinge. That's the only way that you can't cheat and hit the trigger a little bit as you're going through the shot. So I'm going to start by showing you on the hinge what it's going to look like. So on a back tension shot, what you're going to do is draw, anchor, and then basically one important piece is you're just going to keep aiming. Your sight picture is going to move and it's going to float, but you have to learn to be okay with that. Continue aiming, continue staring at the center, and execute your shot. Now when I say execute your shot, what does that mean? Because you're not obviously hitting a trigger, so what are you doing to actually make the release fire? Well, there's a few things. The first thing that you can kind of think of through the back tension shot is pushing or driving your front arm toward the target. Now, I'm going to over exaggerate these movements so you guys can see what they're going to look like on the camera, but in real life you should never actually see these movements through your shot. So, what that looks like is anchoring in and then I'm literally going to extend my front arm out and push towards the target. What that is going to do is apply tension or pressure on your bow, which is going to help fire the release. It's called back tension because you're building tension through the shot. So pushing toward the target is the first option. The second option is actually pulling with your back arm. Now that can look like this or like this, but the idea is that you're actually flexing this back muscle here 
like this through the shot. So as you're flexing that back muscle, you're going to see that back arm or back elbow move back toward the wall. And that can also build tension through the shot, which will fire your release. Now, the way I like to look at those two things is doing them simultaneously. I don't want to just push or just pull. What I'm going to do is think about extending my entire body. So I'm going to anchor in and I'm going to do a little bit of both through the shot until the shot fires. And again, I don't know when the shot is going to go off. I simply aim, build tension, and wait for that shot to fire. So one last trick when shooting back tension is to make sure that your fingers, your wrist, and your forearm are all very relaxed through the shot. It is incredibly tough to shoot when your whole hand is tense and you're never going to be able to pull through that shot. I can build a lot of pressure, which I am right now, and you notice that nothing's happening. But if I relax that wrist to where it's like a dead wrist, my fingers are relaxed, my forearm relaxed, it's much easier to just push and pull through that shot and have it fire smoothly. I know that's tough to do under pressure, but having that whole arm, hand, and fingers relaxed truly is a key secret to shooting successful back tension. I just want to clarify for someone that isn't familiar with the hinge release. With the hinge release, basically the movement of the release rotating this direction is what's going to fire the release, not an actual trigger. So this is the best way to learn back tension because you can't cheat and hit the trigger even if you wanted to. Now I want to show you how to shoot back tension with a thumb button release. This is the actual release that I'm using currently in competition, and it's the True Ball Blade. Now the difference between a hinge release and a thumb release is that the thumb button has a trigger that you actually can activate with your thumb. Now if you're a command style shooter, you're going to activate that when you want to. The difference between that and back tension is what I'm going to do is simply wrap my thumb on the trigger and once my thumb is in place, I never move it again. I'm going to leave that thumb 100% stationary, relax my hand, wrist, and arm, push and pull through the shot until it fires. And that is how you shoot back tension on a thumb button release. The main point is do not move your thumb throughout the shot. Once you place your thumb with the initial pressure on the trigger, it never moves again. If you can do that, then you're effectively shooting the thumb button release using back tension. Now the last style release that I want to cover is an index finger release or a wrist strap release. Now these are probably the most common releases used by beginning archers or hunters and more often than not people shoot these with a command style shot, but they're much more effective if you can shoot these using back tension. Compared to the other style releases, people are much more likely to want to punch an index finger release because your pointer finger is much more sensitive than your thumb. So if you're somebody that already struggles with target panic, I would put this buddy away because it is not what's going to be best for you. Now, how to properly shoot this using back tension. It's just like the thumb button, I'm going to draw back, anchor, wrap my pointer finger on the trigger, and once I apply that initial pressure, I will never move my pointer finger again. From there, I'm just going to relax and pull, push, expand, relax, and wait until the shot breaks. Now again, the entire idea is that once that finger is set, it never moves. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up the difference between a command style shot and a back tension style shot and shows you how to correctly shoot back tension on all three different style releases. I know there's many people out there that believe that you're only shooting proper back tension if you're shooting a hinge, but they are incorrect. If you can apply pressure on the trigger and not move your finger, pull through the shot either on a thumb button or a handheld, you are shooting correct back tension on those release styles as well. Again, I just want to reiterate, if you're learning back tension, I would recommend doing that on a hinge, but once you have it down, you can then apply the technique that you've learned to the other two releases. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I really hope that it helps you perfect your back tension technique regardless of the release style you choose.